Our goals on this video is how to use a multimeter to troubleshoot circuits and at the same time we will learn a more detailed view of constant current sources. Here is a view of my constant current source that we will be using in this. A constant current source is great for troubleshooting and preventing you from actually damaging more components than what you started with and is in you've got to have this for prototyping and so forth. This is a cooler fan, this is the pass transistor on a heatsink, and that's the control circuitry. All right, here's the schematic to it. We're not too concerned with this in this video other than to say I have a PNP tra pass transistor and I use an LM317 circuit to control the emitter base current which control, controls my emitter collector current. All right, here is the circuit we will be mainly dealing with. I have ch reduced this circuit up here with the transistor LM317 to this particular box here. Here is the Q1 pass transistor. That's the emitter and that's the collector. And this is a constant current source output. Looking at this, we'll measure the voltage across Q1, emitter to collector, we will look at the current through Q1, through the amp meter, and to the parallel connected uh, 10 ohm resistors and the voltage across them. In this case, I have adjusted my constant current source for 1 amp. What that amounts to is I have 1 amp through the pass transistor, 1 amp will pass through my amp meter, and then this uh, one amp will divide between the two parallel 10 ohm resistors. The two parallel resistors gives me a load of 5 ohms. 5 ohms times one amp is 5 volts. And if you divide the 5 volts by 10 ohms, you get 500 milliamps per resistor. So we have one amp going into the resistor pair and it will split between the two. But the current through the pass transistor, through the meter, and through the parallel resistance is all the same. Note that the voltage here, 1 amp times ten, uh, 5 ohms gives you 5 volts. Okay, there's 5 volts. That 5 volt point is actually on the collector of the pass transistor. So it must hold that 13 volts is dropped across Q1, the pass transistor. 5 volts plus 13 volts goes back to my 18 volts that, that's going in. And the 1 amp through the system uh, minus... Uh, there's a little actually, actually a little more because there's a little, few milliamps going through this control circuit. For the most part, the current from VN equals the current through Q1, the amp meter, and the parallel resistor set. All right, let's uh, clear up some issues on how to use a multimeter. In series circuits, the sum of the voltage drops equals the input voltage. The current through each component is equal. The current from the 18 volts is the same as the current through Q1, same as the current through the amp meter, same as the current going through these parallel 10 ohm resistors that produces a 5 ohm load. On parallel circuits, the sum of the individual currents equals the total current. So 500 milliamps through each 10 ohm resistor is going to add back to the original 1 amp. Your voltage is determined by your resistance, as we will see shortly. The voltage across each component is equal. So the voltage across both 10 ohm resistors is equal, whatever that comes out to be. As you are making these measurements, let's note, note something. 
never connect an ammeter in parallel. Do never, for instance, check a voltage in the amp setting. An amp meter has a real low resistance. You try checking a voltage, you just shorted out the circuit, maybe blew the fuse in your meter if you're lucky and didn't blow the meter. Never connect an ohm meter to a powered circuit. If you're going to use it in the ohms range, turn off the power. When you're checking voltage, don't start at the lowest voltage setting. Start at a high voltage range and come down after you've done some checking. Uh, I've done troubleshooting for about 50 years. Believe me, you will save a lot of grief. And even after all these years, I can occasionally make a mistake. And that's just normal. Just be aware of it. Now we're going to change things a little bit. I'm going to open the switch over here and remove one of the 10 ohm parallel resistors. This will give me a load now of 10 ohms, not 5 ohms. My constant current source is still set at 1 amp. 1 amp times 10 ohms is 10 volts. 10 volts from 18 volts means my pass transistor is dropping 8 volts. But now we come to a problem. I have a load of 10 ohms. At 1 amp gives me 10 volts. Can I, with an 18 volt supply, can I adjust this thing to do 2 and 3 amps like I did, like I showed earlier? The answer is no. If I set the constant current source for 2 amps, well, 2 amps times 10 ohms is 20 volts. I just exceeded the voltage of the input. The load voltage has to be a couple of volts, volts lower than the constant current source input voltage. So what's the max I can get out of this circuit now with a 10 ohm load? 18 volts minus about 2 divided by 10 ohms, 1.6 amps. That's all I'm going to get. With a 5 ohm load and an 18 volt, I could go over 3 amps. The only way to get this thing back up to 2 amps is to increase the input voltage to, say, 24 volts. All right, here is my circuit again, but this time I have used two 20 ohm resistors in parallel. I still have 1 amp coming out of the constant current source. 20 ohms in parallel with 20 ohms is a load of 10 ohms. And again, the current will divide 500 milliamps per branch, and I'll have 10 volts. And I'm still stuck with the problem as before with the 10 ohm load. I can only draw a max of 1.6 amps before the circuit goes to pieces. Okay, in this scenario, I lost one of my 20 ohm resistors, so my load now is 20 ohms, not 10 ohms. I tried to set this thing for 1 amp. It is not happening. If it was 1 amp, it would be 20 times 1, ohms times 1 amp would be 20 vo volts. I just exceeded my voltage in again, and it's not regulating. What I'm going to get is what I'm going to get about 17, 18 volts here or so. So note the following. Your output voltage is determined by load resistance and input voltage. If the output voltage exceeds or is within a volt or two of the input voltage, it will no longer be a constant current source. It will stop working. I can set this to 1 amp with that 20 ohm load. It's not going anywhere. It will not get above 850 milliamps. All right, that completes this video clip. Um, thanks for listening in on it. And give all of this some thought. Work your way through it. If you have questions, you can email me, of course. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thank you. Also note there is a live clip directly at the end of this video. 
Here is my actual voltage reading of 5 volts across the load resistors and a current that I set up for 1 amp, as you see here. If I adjust my current to 2 amps, it's going to drop 10 volts. 2 amps times 5 ohms is 10 volts. If I adjust the current for 3 amps times 5 ohms, I'm going to get 15 volts.